What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final, well, actually second to last, but basically final episode in our Indiana Jones series. We'll still do a couple more pieces of content and everything, but today we're going to be talking about The Dial of Destiny. Is it a good movie? Is it bad? Is it a letdown? Is it a failure like everybody else is saying? Well, it's not. It's a good, enjoyable Indiana Jones film. I got done watching it, um... Like over an hour ago or so, I went today on 4th of July to go watch the movie and I was actually surprised because I'm still going to make this video, but I was going to make this video and it was going to be called What Happened to the Cinema? Because, you know, recently I've been going to see new movies and the cinema has been dead and these are big popular movies that I see making so much money. And then the one movie that I see that bombed my entire auditorium is just full of people people are clapping at the end everybody's laughing throughout the movie and everybody's having a good time and i'm just like what is happening but it was a really fun theater experience a lot of people went there and i think rewatched all of the indiana jones films recently a lot of people were picking up on a lot of references in this film and just overall enjoying themselves within a moderate average blockbuster film that's indiana jones so i have a lot to say about this movie like i already said it's good it's enjoyable that's about all i'm gonna say on it because you know it's not like amazing um i didn't really think it was gonna be amazing i will say the end sequence of the movie actually blew me away i was like whoa that is actually really cool it's a little bit strange but it's really neat i think it's one of the coolest endings in an indiana jones film of course you know, the ending in Raiders is just so iconic, but the ending in this one, we'll get to it in a little bit. I will say this review will be spoiler-free until a certain point. I will let you know a lot when it's going to be a spoiler zone. So, this movie, you know, follows Indiana Jones. We get to just, like, see his final adventure we get to see a lot of his friends in this movie, which is really interesting. Old friends in the franchise. And we get to meet some new friends. Um, specifically, a girl by the name of Helena, which is her his goddaughter. Um, and she has a friend uh, named Teddy, I believe. Yeah, Teddy. And, you know, you have Helena, Indy, and Teddy. And the three of them are the trio of the film. They are going after the Dial of Destiny and it was made by this guy, um, some mathematician uh, from the Roman uh, ages. And this uh, dial of destiny would actually, they don't really explain it super well in the beginning. They just kind of say, you would not just be a king, you would not just be a defuher, because of course there's some Nazis talking about this stuff. You would not just be an emperor you would become a god and that's all you really get and then at the end of the movie we learn this thing can shift time that's the purpose of it now if they mentioned that earlier in the film i didn't really pick up either because i was super bored early in the film or just because they didn't make it super in your face this is going to give you the powers of time travel now this movie does a lot of things well and that's of course what i want to talk about first the good things that are spoiler free and the bad things that are spoiler free. And then we'll get to the spoilers. So some good things that this movie does. Number one. The performances. The performances are amazing. Harrison Ford does an amazing job. As Indy. Everybody else in their respective roles does a good job. Very good job. I was very impressed. Um, Sala is in this movie for maybe less than three minutes on the screen. And he's in the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. So it was very sad, but it was cool to see him. I was very happy that they at least included him. But very sad that he did not go on the adventure with Indy. Um, this movie has one of the better opening sequences to an Indy film. The first 20 minutes of this movie are very solid, very fun. It brings you back to like... I felt like I was watching a... Uh, I don't know, like maybe an extended piece of last crusader like it could have been it could have fit in the last crusades especially if you just had added a uh dr you know henry williams uh indy's father you know it just really felt like a last crusade type deal and 
you know, if you know and have been following uh, my thoughts on the theory, series, I think that Indiana Jones Raiders is the best, but I think also that The Last Crusades is equally as good, but I'd prefer to watch Raiders any day. Um, this movie has cool cinematography, amazing cinematography. John Williams comes back to do the music, so of course that's amazing. It just really... It, it feels like an old Indiana Jones movie. It feels like a Indiana Jones movie that you just love and you just instantly love it because of the score. You like it because of the acting and the cinematography and all this stuff. I will say some of the cinematography though is just like eh, it's just kinda like eh, generic um Hollywood blockbuster, but some of it is amazing. Some of the shots in this film, if you went frame by frame, like some of the shots are spectacular. It's not like other movies where there's like at least 50 different shots that you're like, whoa, it's not like a Christopher Nolan type of film where it's like you could analyze every scene and get at least 10 shots from each scene that are just like mind blowing to you. Um, it's not like that. And it's not quite like the original movies. Uh, the original trilogy, I think, had some better shots, but the cinematography and everything is definitely better than like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and such. Now let's move on to some of the things I don't like. And the biggest thing that everybody's been saying, and of course I also can attest to, is that Helena is not a good character. Helena is Indy's goddaughter, and she is just an unlikable character. They make her this way, actually. They write her as this unlikable character who puts Indiana Jones' life in danger to where he could possibly die. Like, he was so close to death a lot of times in this movie, and it's like, wow, you, you made it. And then by the end, like the final 30 minutes, the final act of the movie, the final act of the movie is, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the movie. It is also one of the weirder parts because they start playing with the supernatural side of Indiana Jones. But then she becomes more caring about Indy. And she's like, wow, you kind of looked out for me. It's so like, yeah, no crap, lady. And it takes her, I think, like, you know, like two hours of the movie to figure out, hey... I'm, I shouldn't just use Indy for the riches and the fame and the glory. In fact, I shouldn't even just look after the riches and the fame and the glory. I should actually look after him like I'm looking after my kid over here, Teddy. Now, it's not like she's Teddy's mom from what we know so far. But, you know, it's like, it's almost like Teddy's her son in some ways. Um, but also, like, partner um, in uh, business business crime because she's kind of a criminal in the movie you learn that she has criminal intentions um and that yeah okay so that's all the things that i think are bad well actually i will also say this movie does something that they almost they almost went down a last jedi route well now what i mean is they take your favorite character and they turn him to crap they do this a little bit they make indiana jones a drunk dude who is now divorced his son died and i guess that's a slight spoiler that his son died and then he's now divorced but like it's not like a major one no he's just like just angry drunk dude who is just an angry old man and they play with that for like maybe after the 20 minute sequence there's like a, another sequence that's more in present day and i'll explain that in a little bit in the spoiler zone but you know it's just like he's this drunk dude and it's kind of stupid because they don't really they kind of use it as a pillar of the story but it doesn't even really matter he it becomes prevalent that he's more so into the adventure especially by the third act of the film like the middle act of the film it's like okay yeah he's getting more into it once they get to like a place like morocco um but overall it's not that bad. They didn't fully deconstruct Indiana Jones. He's still the Indiana Jones we love and know. But he was a lot more of a cheery guy in the originals. Now, this is the spoiler zone. So, if you do not want this movie spoiled, get out, get out, turn this off. So, we're going to jump right into it with things I absolutely love. This dial of, uh, I think his name was like Archimedes or something like that. I think it was Archimedes. So this mathematician dude from like the Roman eras, right? And we get this thing where he was trying to create this dial and it was going to point in a direction. And it's super vague. I didn't really get what they were like, what this dial can do. And then we learn at the very end 
of the movie that this thing can have time travel. So I kind of need to back up to one of the good things. The first 20 minutes of the movie is a de-aged Harrison Ford, which we do see in the trailers. He is in Nazi Germany. Hitler is losing the war. Um, it's becoming very prevalent. So they are looking for the dial. And this, of course, sets up everything that happens later. There's some really funny scenes where, you know, um, Indy disguises himself as like a Nazi. And he is walking through this train and he has to like blend in. And he also has to... Like, some of the Nazis were saluting him, and he has to, like, he can't speak German, so he's just trying to, like, get about his way. And first, they were looking for the blade that actually pierced um, Jesus Christ, and they had it, but it was actually a decoy. And then we learned that the dial was more significant and more important, because that actually has real mystical value. The blade that pierced Christ doesn't have any mythological value that, you know, we get in these indie movies. And so we get this dial... There's some fun action adventures with Indy and his friend, who I forgot his name. And his friend is actually the dad of Helena. Now we have to talk about the end of the movie, which is my favorite part. The third act of the movie, my absolute favorite. The Nazi guy in the vi in the game, or not the game, the Nazi guy in the movie, he is this uh, a guy who is wanting to actually kill Hitler because Hitler failed the Nazi party in his opinion and Hitler is the reason that they lost the war. And this is very like surprising and shocking kind of to the audience. Like, ooh, that's kind of interesting that you want to use this dial. We learn this dial is actually time travel and you can manipulate time. Now, I do want to say, I remember in the early days, and this was teased to be an Indiana Jones with time travel, I never knew that got confirmed. So by the end of the movie, I'm like, time travel? Okay, they better pull this off. And so they have this sequence where they actually end up time traveling and going through like this portal type thing. And they think that they got the right date. And they actually did it. Instead, they end up in the times of the man who built this dial. And now they are in ancient uh, Roman lands. And it is an epic just... Greek battle, you know, it's something that you would read in the Greek mythology or Greek history, and it's just an awesome battle that's happening, and then everybody's teaming up to destroy the massive plane, because they've never seen a plane, right? And so this is where we get the idea of dragons, apparently, in this universe, you know, they're like, oh, it's a dragon, so they try to beat up this plane. Suffice it to say that at the very end... Indy wants to, uh, this is a major spoiler, Indy wants to die actually there. He wa he got shot um, by one of the Nazis, and so he's struggling to uh, live, and he wants to die a peaceful life there. And I thought to myself in the theater, you know, this is going to be sad, but I think it would be a nice fitting end. Nope. Helena actually punches him in the face, and they end up, uh, they, they end up escaping. So, Indy goes back to present day and the movie ends where Marion actually sees him and they kind of have a rekindling of love which didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me but I was like okay well just go with it and you have Sala and Helena and it sets it up for a sixth movie potentially but it also is a nice ending to the series those are the things that I liked right now this thing I guess isn't super spoilery but these are things I don't like um honestly I'm kind of torn if I do like that he has a happy ending like that or if he should have died for right now I like it but if there's going to be a sequel then I'm not going to like it because I think it really does give them potential to make a sequel which is highly unnecessary now something that I didn't like that isn't even super spoilery is the pacing of this film um, the pacing of this film is just all over the place this movie's like two hours and 30 minutes, closer to three hours, right? And the normal Indiana Jones movies, but back in the day, they were like two hours, right? They made this movie so long, and I just don't understand why. The There is the, of course, 20-minute sequence where they get deep fake Indy in Germany, and then we go to, like, present day, and we learn that, you know, um, our heroes from the moon landing are coming back home. And while that's going on, we learn about the dial, but it's kind of vague also what we're learning about the dial. We're 
getting some type of relationship with Helena and Indy and we're saying, oh, maybe something's like there and they know each other. But it's just really boring until they go to Morocco, which is an absolute fun thing. And they go to Morocco and there's like this these gangs, right? But then we get like a 20-minute chase scene and I'm like, I like Indiana Jones chase scenes, but 20 minutes is kind of going on for a long time and it's like, I don't know if it was super necessary to be like, 15 to 20 minute chasing um there is something that i guess is super spoilery one of indy's friends who i don't remember if we saw him in the originals he had a boat i think i kind of think we saw him in raiders but he had a boat and indy wanted to go diving to get this piece of the puzzle and the guy who had the boat ends up dying to one of the nazi villains the villain and they kill him in front of Indy, and Indy just kind of has no emotion. Like, he's like, oh, he killed my friend. And then, of course, they have to escape. And then when they get off the boat, uh, and they're on a new boat to go find the place, Indy's just like, they killed my friend. And then Helena kind of, like, makes a joke about it. And then they just get back to the adventure, and I'm like, what is going on? It was a dumb thing like it's trying to be an emotional movie especially with like oh mutt died because of me i could have prevented that's like a big point in the movie like indy's like oh i could have prevented my son from going into the war i told him he would die and he did and that's why my divorce happened but then it's like your friend just died in front of you and you're not even sad about it um so overall this movie was super enjoyable super fun uh i'm gonna make a ranking video so you guys can actually see where i place my indiana jones films i think you guys might be surprised by where i place this one after everything i've said i don't know maybe you guys won't be um with that all being said i hope you guys have a great day i hope you guys enjoyed this series we will be hopefully watching the Soderbergh cut again um, I saw that live stream got like over 200 views, which I think is insane. My live streams never go that big. Um, so that was cool, but we'll try to do a watch party on that maybe when I get back from camp. So probably like uh, middle of July, we'll do a watch party on that. I don't know. But the next big series on the channel every Wednesday, of course, of course, of course, is going to be the original Star Wars trilogy. I'm really excited to watch the original Star Wars trilogy. I'm watching it all on VHS. I meant to do this in May, but I wasn't here in May. Um, but, you know, last year we did the prequels. This year we're going to do the originals. And next year I will suffer through the sequels again. But this year is the original. So we don't have anything to suffer through. These are great movies. And I'm watching them on VHS. So I think that's going to be a little bit original. I don't think they've been edited. So with that all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this film. I hope you guys enjoyed the film review. Let me know down below in the comments. What is your favorite Indiana Jones film? If you watch this movie, what do you think of the movie? And with that being said, peace out. And always remember, like I said in the last one, if you want to become a better archaeologist, spend more time out in the field, less time in the library.